Okay, so the only two lenses you need to film any sport there is are currently hidden inside those two little pouches in my desperate attempt to build up anticipation. But before we open them up, I just want to go back a few years to when I suggested this lens as the only one you need to film great sport videos on a budget. So what's this magic lens I keep talking about? Here it is, the Canon EFS 18 to 200 mil. The key word here is budget because the main differences between this video and the one I made about this 18 to 200 mil lens is the fact that this is a budget lens that is not the sharpest, uh, doesn't have the fastest or most accurate autofocus, and it also has variable aperture, which means that the image gets darker as you zoom in. Meanwhile, both these lenses have a constant aperture. They are also much faster and sharper, but obviously it comes at a price. So I just wanted to make it clear that all three lenses have their own pros and cons, but if you started your sports videography kit with a lens similar to this, and you're ready to take the quality of your videos to the next level, this is where it's at. And I'm gonna explain in a minute why we need two quality lenses just to replace the one budget lens, but for now, let's enjoy a dramatic reveal. Okay, so the first lens is the Tamron 28-75 to f2.8. Um, this is a great lens for indoor sports, mainly because of its zoom range and focal length. So if you're filming sports like basketball or wrestling or volleyball, you'll be all good to go with this as long as you're not too far from the sidelines. By the way, I am fully aware that I went from a Canon lens earlier to now one made for Sony cameras. And the reason for this is quite simple. I used to be a Canon shooter and now I am 100% team Sony. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because this video is not specifically about these two lenses. It's about the specs of those lenses because once you understand the specs that make these lenses perfect for sport, then you can look for those specs in any lens, whether it's a Canon, a Sony, a Lumix, or even an Nikon. So anyway, the first big plus about this lens is that it's a full frame lens. So it works with both full frame and APS-C cameras. So if you're using it, for example, with a Sony a6400, or in this case, a Sony ZV-E10, um, the day that you decide to move on to a full frame body, this lens will still be able to work on your new camera. The second big advantage is the fact that it's a constant aperture lens. So the image doesn't get darker as you zoom in. Instead, it remains the exact same the whole way through. And also f2.8 is quite a wide aperture that lets a lot of light in. So it works perfectly in a dark environment like a poorly lit gym and it allows you to keep your ISO down to avoid seeing noise or grain in your image, even when you're filming at 120 frames per second. A wide aperture also means shallow depth of field, which in a nutshell is what gives you those beautiful blurry backgrounds that make your subject pop and give your content an overall very cinematic look. Speaking of cinematic look, I would just like to remind you guys that I recently created a luck pack specific to sports that you can buy on my website beyondthegame.tv. There's 12 LUTs in total, and each of them is built with a specific sports-related scenario in mind. So if you're a sports videographer and you want your videos to have a professional look no matter what camera you're using, make sure you go check out my ultimate sports LUT pack through the link in the description below. Unfortunately, there is a downside to constant aperture lenses like this. Uh, it's the fact that they don't have a very wide zoom range, not even close to this 18 to 200 mil, for example. Um, honestly, I'm not 100% sure why that is. Uh, I've got a pretty good idea, but if you guys know for sure, please let me know in the comments. But either way, 
this is why you can't replace the convenience of a variable aperture lens from a zoom range and focal length perspective. And it's also why you need two high quality lenses to replace just the one budget lens. So yes, my second lens is the Tamron 70 to 180 mil f 2.8. And it obviously has all the same specs, all the same advantages that I just went through for the 28 to 70 mil. But in the focal length, it basically picks up where the other one left off. And um, yeah, I use this lens for all my outdoor sports. So soccer, rugby, football, anything you can think of really. And I know a lot of people use this lens or similar ones to film indoors, but personally, it's just that I, I'm quite close to the sidelines when I'm filming and I would just hate for something really cool to happen right in front of me and basically not be able to capture it properly because I can't zoom out enough in the moment. And when I'm filming a basketball game from the baseline, for example, and the action is at the other end, um, even if I've got this lens on and I can get some good close-ups with it, I'm still shooting from the back. And I don't know, close-ups from the back to me are not great shots at all. But if you're filming indoors from a distance that allows you to capture shots as wide as you need them to be with a 70mm focal length, then this might actually be the only lens you need to film any sport. It's obviously a direct competitor to Sony's 70 to 200 mm f2.8 G Master, in the same way that the other one is a direct competitor to the 24 to 70 mm f2.8 G Master. And honestly, if you can't afford it, just buy the Sony's. Because when it comes to things like autofocus and sharpness, the Tamarins are great, don't get me wrong, but the Sony's are just a little bit better. And the 70 to 200 mil G Master also comes with image stabilization, while the Tamron version does not. But when you compare the prices though, personally, I'm happy to stick with Tamron because the specs that really matter to me when filming sports are the fact that these are full frame lenses, that they have a constant and wide aperture, and that the zoom range and focal length of both these lenses cover me for an entire game of whatever sport I'm filming that day. And for those of you wondering if you're missing a lot by having a maximum focal length of 180mm instead of 200 let me remind you of a test I did in a previous video where I compared a 200mm focal length to a 300mm focal length. Right now you're looking at a 100mm focal length difference using the same camera on both sides. So I don't know about you but for me Considering that 20mm would only be 20% of the difference we're seeing here, I really don't think it's that big of a deal, especially for the price. So yeah, for me, this is it. I love the fact that I can show up with both these lenses to any sporting event or any shoot really, and know for a fact that I'll be fully covered framing wise at a very high quality level. Um, also, the cool thing about the Tamarins that you don't get with the Sony's is that the filter size is exactly the same. So you can swap lens caps, you can swap ND filters, and it all fits perfectly. So if you did uh, choose to swap lenses uh, during games, it would make it much easier. By the way, I've put a link in the description below to my personal recommendations for professional sports filming kits. And in there, you'll find all the lenses I mentioned in today's video, as well as a few others, and also cameras and accessories. So go have a look at all that if you're interested. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching not only this video, but all my others as well, because I know I say it all the time, but ultimately, I really hope I earned the privilege of your time.